engineering background, my experience will help building a good instrumentation and that can help scientists to do their job, explore or record whatever is out there that they need. As a technician, my contribution to the scientific aspect of things really involves making sure we have a reliable system. We can build a tool for the scientists to use so they can capture what scientific data they need, which involves reliability, stability, accuracy. Really, we all have the same kind of big picture. We're trying to get to the same goal. The scientists have some ideas that they would like to accomplish. They have um, events that they'd like to capture. They just don't know how to capture them. And so having them convey what they want to the engineering side, then the engineers can basically grasp kind of what they're saying and then try to make an instrument that's capable of taking those measurements. The scientists can just go there and say, well, there's a beautiful weather that I really want to know what's going on. We stand behind their back and provide that piece of equipment that they really need, that's well calibrated, that's stable, so we could go there and fulfill everybody's dream. They could finally record this tornado that they always wanted to do, and us can be there, you know, provide that for them. A new instrument gets developed by ideas. As scientists come up with different ideas, they kind of drive the theoretical design aspects, and it's up to the engineers to make that happen. It often started from a scientist talking to an engineer and say, hey, look, I have this idea that I want to research the hurricane and I want to put it on the plane. So the engineer would start thinking about, hey, what kind of precipitation, how heavy is the rain that you're talking about? What kind of resolution do you want? What kind of airplane do you want to put on? And from that, we get creative. And that's the most ex exciting part of the job is you get creative and you try to figure out how to build this tool. Engineering can also be advanced by technology. More advanced technology can result in a better, more accurate, higher resolution, faster data sampling, and your end result is a better product. I used to do tornado research. When you're using a lower frequency radar, a, a 10 centimeter radar, you're seeing the whole severe storm. You could see the formation of the tornado. And now there's researchers out there using a millimeter wave radar which has a higher resolution. And because of the higher resolution radar, we could actually see their small vortices that's wrapped around the tornado, which they never saw before. So that's a really exciting finding, just because our radar development is enabling this thing to happen. You didn't have the tool, so you never knew it was there. Now you have the tool, and then you can see it. Some of the challenges coming from a design standpoint, you see a 3D model, it looks great on the computer screen, you start building the parts, you start putting it together. Wait a minute, I can't get to that bolt, I can't wire this. So that's where the design aspect, you kind of have to think in the future. You have to plan for problems, you have to plan for serviceability, you have to plan for maintenance, and also plan for upgrades. We want to try to make it easier in the future to replace that part with a more modern, faster, better part. It is such an exciting experience and it's such an important thing that we do together. This is my passion, you know, to, to work with scientists and do the best I can so then they could really do what they want to do. The relationship between engineering and scientific discovery is very important. They go hand in hand and requires effort on both sides. They can drive one another to create a perfect instrument. Really there is no perfect instrument, it's always ever evolving and the push from either side, from the scientific side or from the engineering side, can always make the system better.